Hello, everyone. Welcome to this TriCaster training session. Um, last thing before this starts, um, this is not affiliated with anyone or anything. Um, I'm just doing this on my own. I got bored and I saw that there's a lot of people who need to do TriCaster stuff, a lot of people looking to do TriCaster stuff. Um, and I found that there's a lot of traditional broadcast people who haven't kind of gotten into this more digital new age kind of production. Um, and there's also a lot of people in social media who want to be able to do this on their own um, that might not be TV video professionals. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm doing this. Um, so first, uh, let's get going. Let's go to the next slide here. A uh, little bit about me and TriCaster. These are some of the people that I've done um, TriCaster and video work with. Um, I uh, did live streaming with Al Roker Entertainment for quite some time. Um, we used a lot of TriCaster. There are a lot of other streaming technologies there as well. Uh, worked with Anthony Cumia. If any of you know Opie and Anthony, uh, that's Anthony from that. Um, and I uh, basically helped get his show off the ground after he got uh, fired from SiriusXM for saying a bunch of stupid things on the internet. Uh, and last notable thing is I worked for Neil deGrasse Tyson for the last uh, six or so years. Um, working on his podcast, Start Talk, doing all of his video content, all of his audio stuff, a lot of social digital media. Um, so I've been doing this TriCaster stuff for over 10 years now. I'm very excited to share it with all of you. Um, I sent out a poll to all of you. Um, I figured I'd at least give you some of that information so we all know what we're all doing. Don't worry, the slideshow portion of this is going to be like five minutes, and then the rest I'm going to be showing you TriCaster, and there'll be plenty of time for Q&A. Um, I should also mention, I have uh, also on the line, uh, Chris from New Tech. Um, he, uh, New Tech, uh, creates TriCaster. Um, he was nice enough to hook me up with a digital version of TriCaster so I could show you all the newest version of this. Um, so he might pop in uh, from time to time if there's something that I get wrong, which is possible. Um, I am not an official salesperson for this. I just like using the thing. Most of you, most of you work in broadcast TV. About the, well, not most of you, a plurality of you work in broadcast TV, about 34%. Uh, and about 26% of you work in digital media. So just to kind of get uh, all of you acquaintance with the group of, let's see, how many do we have right now? 141 people watching on Zoom. Okay. Uh, and only like five of you said ice cream truck driver. It's a sad life. Um, as far as all of your experience using TriCaster, most of you not very experienced. Um, very few of you very experienced, which makes sense. Um, as far as experience live streaming, we've got all sorts of experience. And as far as experience in TV and video production, most of you have some sort of uh, experience doing this. Um, and as far as things that you've all heard of, TriCaster, obviously that's why you're all here. Uh, most of you know about TriCaster. Um, about a quarter of you know about the hit TV show, The Wire. I don't know why I put that in there. Um, and about 50% of you heard of QWERTY, which is just the keyboard. Good job, everyone. And, 69.3% of you signed up for emails, idiots. No, uh, we won't abuse that, I promise. Um, okay, so let's get right to it. Um, what is TriCaster? TriCaster, I often call it, is a TV studio in a box. It does everything. So what I'm showing you right here is a TriCaster Mini. Um, they actually just came out with a new TriCaster Mini, I believe, last week that um, does full NDI. I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, but basically, it's that little box you see up in the top right corner. Um, the little control surface that goes with it. You got a keyboard, power supply, it all comes in a nice case. Um, this is a relatively low cost, really easy to use unit, really portable. Um, so if you're into, if you're into um, mini things, we got it here. Give me one second. I promised Philip that I would help him out. He's uh, helping me with Facebook stream. Give me one second here, everyone. Entertain yourselves. And we are back. Ah, technology problems are beautiful. Um, okay. Um, price point on the Mini. Um, actually, Chris, you might be able to be better at answering that than me, but you know, we'll, we'll get you some information on pricing and all of that later. Um, you can also search um, online for it, but um, if anyone's interested in purchasing, purchasing any of this, I could also get information on that. Um, we'll get to information on pricing later. Um, this is the back of the TC1. Um, 
the front is just a box. Um, so I didn't pull it up here. Did I pull it? No, I didn't pull up one of the TC1. Um, but this is just to show you for the uh, TriCaster TC1. Um, it has SDI video inputs and outputs, four of each. It's also got um, analog audio uh, inputs and outputs. It's got plenty of USB, plenty of Ethernet, and it's got multiple display outputs, HDMI, display, and DVI. Um, so you could use that to do multiple monitors, uh, multiple multi-views. Um, for those of you who haven't done any TV production before, or don't know any of these things, these are basically cables, cables and connections that get your cameras and audio into the TriCaster. Uh, and this is the back of the TriCaster Mini. Um, so it's got USB, it's got all the same ports, display and everything. Um, they make versions of the Mini that do HDMI. Um, they make versions that have SDI and also NDI. Um, so these are all different ways to get your signal in. NDI is network video, uh, which is TriCaster's protocol for that. Um, and I'll be talking about that in a little bit. Uh, I'm being told that there's no audio by some people. That's not true, turn on your audio. Um, all of the TriCasters have an option to come with a control surface. Right here, you see four of the control surfaces. Up top, you've got the Mini. Um, you've got the TC1 control surfaces in the middle. Um, they have ones that are made for specifically four inputs and then uh, many more inputs through NDI. And at the bottom, you got the IP series or the VMC, uh, which looks a lot more like a traditional, um, like a traditional broadcast switcher. Um, you don't need to use one of these. Um, you can do everything through the mouse, which is actually what I'm going to be predominantly showing you today uh, for two reasons. One, um, these do cost more money. So if you're looking to start bare bones, um, you know, you can work with just the TriCaster. Um, and also, I actually don't have a control surface with me right now. I took home an entire setup for work um, right before this whole coronavirus thing hit, thinking that I would uh, maybe be out for one or two weeks. Um, but it turns out that it's a lot longer than that. Um, so I'm here without a control surface. That being said, um, TriCaster can let you use external control surfaces. Um, I see actually Chris here is in the chat. Just for reference, the current going price for the Mini 4K is $79.95. Thank you, Chris. Um, so if you don't want to get one of these control surfaces, you can't afford it yet, or you don't have enough room, you can actually use external accessories to do this. Um, my favorite way to do that is something called X keys. This is what I use for my day job right now, uh, mostly because I just don't even have room on my desk right now. I have an audio mixer, I have two computers and my TriCaster monitors uh, and everything else. Um, so this actually does everything that I need it to do. Um, I was able to label it and customize it. Um, and these costs, um, these start at less than 100 bucks, but they can get uh, much fancier than that. Um, so for certain applications, especially where you're trying to do very few things, uh, sometimes an external um, thing like this might be better. You know I'm not a new tech official salesperson because I'm not sure if, that, if they'd say, hey, don't get the control surface. So you could totally deal with that. I'm seeing people asking about Stream Deck. Yes, Stream Deck absolutely works for this. Um, for those of you who don't even know what a control surface does, I realize we have some very beginners in here. Um, it basically lets you use a physical thing to let you control your TriCaster. Novation Launchpad also works, yes. Um, this is what your TriCaster screens look like. Um, so you've got your main interface there on the right. On the left, you have a multi-view. Um, with the more advanced units, you can have multiple multi-view screens. This is really nice. You can either set them to full screen video. You can see your program preview, your individual sources. Um, so there's plenty um, of customization you could do here to fit your needs. I'll show you how to work, do all of that in a little bit. Um, also, we're not explicitly talking about uh, the New Tech Talk Show, which is their um, explicit Skype unit today. Um, but the TriCaster TC1 and the new Mini, they have Skype built into them, two channels of Skype built into them. Um, you need a separate PC to control those, but basically you can have a full quality Skype signal using professional protocols and everything uh, right in your TriCaster. So as you're doing remote work right now, uh, maybe you need to bring in a remote host, remote guest. Everyone has the ability to use Skype. Um, it makes Skype and TriCaster work very, very well together. Yep, you need to use software called Skype TX and TX Controller uh, to control them. Actually, you can do that in the application Chris is telling me. Um, just so you all know, I'm using a slightly older TriCaster right now um, in my day-to-day -day life. I'm going to be showing you on a brand new TriCaster. Um, so there might even be things that I miss here. Um, but even, even the older units are great. The newer ones, even better. I think that is it. You know what, why don't we quickly go to some Q&A just on the first few minutes of this, and then we will get right to the TriCaster part, okay? 
I respond, I'm asking a question, even though most of you aren't here. Can you walk through a FaceTime call? We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, can we talk about other switchers as well? 810 Mini Pro, perhaps. I just got my 810 Mini Pro in the mail today. Um, not specifically talking about that here, but we might talk about some of the other ones here. Video conferencing function, where you can capture multiple guests. Um, you can actually use um, Skype itself, just regular old Skype has NDI built into it. NDI is network audio. Um, and you can use that to um, actually send individual Skype feeds if you don't have a talk show or another way to do it with individual audio. Um, TriCaster, I find to be very reliable. Back in the day, not as much years and years ago, but now I don't have crashes. Everything works fine for me uh, pretty much all the time as long as I don't do something stupid, which I have a tendency to do sometimes, but not all the time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to my TriCaster window. Uh, let's see. Hey, oh, there we go. There we go. There is my TriCaster window. Let me get it to the right thing so you can see my stupid face while this is all happening. Okay, everybody, welcome to TriCaster. If this is your first time um, seeing TriCaster, it might look a little overwhelming, but I guarantee you by the end of this, you will completely understand what's going on. If you're experienced with TriCaster, um, this will look very familiar to you. Uh, if you're a TV person, like an old school broadcast person, someone that hasn't done this kind of production before prosumer production, um, if you're not using, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment, um, welcome to TriCaster. I will try to talk through this in as simple and advanced a way as possible at a time. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do. Normally, I have in-person feedback. Uh, I'm not used to talking to people of all different skill sets all at the same time, all in such a short period of time. Um, so we will try to get to as much as we can right now. Okay, so first, let's talk about the general interface. Up top here, you have uh, your multi-view. Um, this is basically where you can see all of your individual sources, all of your camera inputs, all of your internal... Oh, my microphone is muted. Why is my mic... Oh, Chris's microphone is probably muted. Working right now. Okay, I believe all the audio is working. Uh, if anyone who knows me wants to comment if it's not working uh, or text me, let me know. Otherwise, I will keep talking. Um, fortunately, the audio is working. Thank you, Luke Watson. Um, okay, starting over again. Um, so on the top left here, you have um, all of your sources. Um, so again, this is cameras. This is your internal media player. So if you need to play back video, if you need to play back audio, um, that's all, um, th that's where that's all going to happen. Um, over here, I'm going to, I'm going to make this part up here a little bit smaller just for now. Uh, I'll just leave that part. Actually. Um, over here, um, you have your program and preview bus. Um, program is what's live, what's actually showing, uh, on your, um, what's actually showing, you know, out to the public, out to your stream, out to your recording. Uh, and down here is preview. This is what you're getting set up in advance. This is what's going to give you the ability to um, test your shot, make sure everything is good looking before it goes on the air. Um, over here, you have your DDR, digital disc recorder. This is where your videos play back. You could also play back stills um, and graphics through here. Um, you have your graphics player if you click over here. Um, this is where you could bring in lower thirds, text on screen, even pictures. Um, over here on sound. Um, sorry about the thing that says your microphone is muted. That's just um, because of how we're doing this whole system. I'm actually using a remote TriCaster right now. Um, th this is Chris's uh, loan me his uh, new tech TriCaster because I don't have the most up-to-date one. So I'm using a screen share to his computer using NDI KVM, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, you've got a sound player over here with all of these, I'm sure, just wonderful sounds. Um, and you've got your audio mixer. Um, so you have control over every individual channel over here um, that's coming into and out of your TriCaster. Uh, this includes, you know, input one. You can get sound directly from your camera sources. Um, you've got your media players, and you can control your, um, your auxiliary outputs um, and your headphones and your master output all through here. Um, and on the right here, you've got your DDR2. So you have two specific video players. Graphics2, so you have more graphics players and also your buffers. Um, frame buffers are a way for you to basically 
have either still frames or looping animations that don't take up your media players. This is really good for things like your logo in the corner of the screen or a looping background or a full screen that you use on every production that you don't want to waste one of your media players for. Um, okay, so we've got our DDRs. Um, most of these work the same way with control. I'll show you how to use those in a little bit. Right now, I'm just going over the interface and then we'll get into how to actually do everything. Um, over here, we have our keyers. Keyers uh, are basically things that let you put um, elements on top of your video. So it lets you do things like graphics. You can see in the top right corner over there, you've got Chris's name over there. You can also do a box on the side of the screen like that. Um, you could even key on um, in the bottom left over there. You see that's actually a full screen video that's just looping from one of the frame. But actually, no, that's looping from the DDR. OK. Um, up here, this is where your mix effects um, bus is. This is where all the really cool part of TriCaster takes place. Um, this is where you can make double boxes, put multiple shots on screen, green screen, virtual sets, special effects. Um, this, this is really where the cool part of the TriCaster is, and that's probably what we'll spend the most time on today. Um, and then up here, you've got your program and preview. Program, again, that's your shot that's going out to the world. Preview, um, that is, again, where you're going to prep your shot. Up top over here, you've got uh, kind of some of your output things. Uh, screen grab, if you want to take a screen grab, you just click on it. If you want to record or do instant replay, this is the button that'll do that up here. Stream and code, if you need to go to Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, basically anywhere, uh, you could do it right through here. Um, and export will let you take your files and uh, export them to a different format or the same format uh, in a way that will work for you. Uh, I am going to briefly look to see if there are any questions of just the interface, and then we'll get on to actual operation. Uh, let me get to the Google one here. Uh, we'll talk about four box, individual audio. Do I use several computers for setup with at least three people during COVID? Am I able to control PTZ cameras remotely? That's from Miles Gambosi. Um, yes, you can control PTZ, that stands for pan tilt zoom cameras remotely. Um, and that's actually robotic um, for those of you who don't know what PTZ means. Uh, so in a little bit, I'll ask Chris to put up his um, camera and we could get control over that and we could actually move his camera around. Uh, does TriCaster support Dante? Um, it does support Dante. Dante is digital audio. Um, you need to do an upgrade uh, in order to do that, um, but it's absolutely available to do. Uh, is Skype the only conferencing so uh, service with native support? Um, it is the only one that natively works with it, um, but there are ways to do all the others, and I can talk to you about that in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to scroll through the Zoom chat here. Let's just see if there's anything obvious here. And I think some people are answering questions in the chat, so I appreciate that. Uh, if the How many SDI inputs can you have in total? Um, all of the units right now, I believe, are capped at it for, I don't know if the 8,000 does more, but uh, using NDI network video, um, you could um, do a whole lot more. They actually make input-output units that will let you do more SDIs. Um, they have a, the uh, NC1 IO is uh, eight, uh, has eight SDI inputs, outputs, and you can use multiple of those. Um, so using NDI, you could really expand your uh, let's see if there's any other questions I want to do right now. Nope, I will go with that for now. Okay. Um, if, uh, it looks like people are answering questions in the chat for me, so you could all keep doing that in the meantime. Uh, let's get to the actual operation of this thing. Parched. Got a drink. Okay, so over here you've got your inputs. Um, let's see, what input should I start with here? Um, I'm going to go with uh, input 5 over here. Uh, what's nice about the newer versions of TriCaster is basically any input uh, could be any source. So you can say, I want camera 1 to be where input 5 is, if that helps you with your workflow, or you need to have multiple versions of a camera, and I'll explain why you might need to do that later. Um, you can do that. So when you roll over any of these multi-views over here, any of these sources, click on the gear button. Uh, by the way, I've learned that I don't normally say the word button correctly. I say button. So if I say button, feel free to make fun of me. So over here, you've got your source. Um, you can click on your source. And if you click on this drop down over here, um, you can see all of the sources that you have available to go into this input. Local are, are going to be the hardwire inputs. 
I lost it for a second there. Local is going to be your hardwire inputs. So those are things that are directly in the TriCaster. That's your physical inputs. That's going to be your Skype callers. You even have a test signal generator in there. The 4K PTZ, that is, uh, that is Chris's camera. Uh, we'll pop that up in a little bit. And it looks like he has a couple other things loaded up on his studio. Um, so he's able to work with that. Also, it looks like um, we've got, um, uh, we have a, a Advanced Edition 3 on here, or Premium Access, which just gives you access to output your multi-viewers, even a teleprompter uh, as an input directly here in TriCaster. Um, so all of that works right in here. Um, so you can choose your source. Um, automatically, it should auto-detect your signals. Um, that being said, if you're having any issues, you can go in and manually choose your frame rate, all that stuff. You could also rotate sources, um, horizontal, vertical, um, in the more advanced editions and premium access. Um, so if you're doing things, let's say on a cell phone or your person doesn't know how to unlock their cell phone when they're Skyping on the other side, that's how you get to it. If this was a PTZ camera, your PTZ control would be right, um, you would tell it to be going over uh, NDI right here. Um, and you could name your input right here. If you don't want it to say input five, if you want it to say teleprompter, for example, you can do that right here. Um, you got your comments. Um, you can actually do some cool things with comments um, with, um, um, with uh, data link, um, which basically means, let's say every time you go to camera two, you want a graphic that pops on screen that says, Bob, my name is Bob. Uh, you can do that using the comments here. And in Capture, if you wanted to record an individual feed, um, this is where you would go to do it. You could name it, um, you could set the file path, um, all that fun stuff. Um, so that's um, basically the things that you could do with an individual input here. Now, um, in, the, uh, in Premium Access, um, you can also pan and scan. I'm not gonna go over this right here, uh, but basically it means if you need to crop on your source or maybe someone's not full screen enough, um, you, can make, uh, you can make it happen there. I'll show you how to do that um, where everyone could do it, not just premium access. Now over here, you've got image, you have auto color, which if you need to color correct, you go ahead and click auto color. Uh, it's pretty good in here. I personally like to do that manually. Um, so you can go into the proc amp over here. You could change the brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation of your shot. I am gonna actually pull up, uh, I'm gonna do this on graphics too over here. Let me just take this live here. Uh, there's graphics too. Uh, up in program over there, you can see graphics too. So I'm going to click on the gear for that. I'm going to go to image and I'm going to do some color correction right now. You can make your brightness brighter. You could either type in a number or drag it. Let's see, I'm using the remote computer, so it's a little hard. Yeah, there we go. Brightness, lower it. Um, you could change the contrast of the image. Um, these are actually things that I do every day. A lot of what I do for my job um, is I'm taking remote Skype callers. These people on the other end of Skype don't know the best way to get their shot, or they're too bright, too dark. Um, and you can really fix a lot of that in here. You could change the hue. So if I wanted new tech to be green, there you go. There's a green new tech. You could boost saturation, all, uh, all that stuff. You can also white balance. Uh, white balancing is really good, especially when you have multiple people coming in remotely. Um, white balance means, what does white actually mean? Um, sometimes people might be a little bluer, a little greener, depending on their light sources. Um, so in order to white balance, you click on this, click and hold on the white balance over here and drag it over to a white part of your scene. Over here, I'm just gonna go to the white on the new tech. And um, now it shows that this is now the perfect white for that white balance. You can also get into advanced features here. We're not gonna get into that too much right now. Um, but basically you could you know, really go in, cater to your reds, brightness, contrast, um, all this stuff. You play with this, you'll learn how to use it. We're not gonna spend all day working on Proc Amp. There's a reset button up here, so if you need to, <coughs> excuse me, um, if you need to just get everything back to its main version right away, you do it right there. Um, next, you know what, Keying, why don't we go ahead, um, I am hoping we have some video of my good friend Kiki in here. Uh, I'm gonna get some green screen footage to work with. Um, I think it's gonna be a new tech NTSC. There is Kiki. I'm gonna go with Kiki. Everyone say hi to Kiki. I'm gonna take her shot right here. Oops. Uh, oh, let's play this one on loop here. There's Kiki. Um, so now you notice that Kiki is in front of a green screen. 
Um, what we want to do right now is we want to take Kiki out of a green screen um, and put a different background behind her. So I'm going to go over here to DDR2. This is the video. Uh, if you were using cameras, this would be your camera. Uh, we're going to click on this up here. And we're going to go to image. And we're going to go to keying. Um, you've got live mat. And um, if you have the fancier versions, you might have live mat ultra. Uh, basically, easiest way to take a key here, click and hold on this green over here. And just go to somewhere where it's green. Somewhere that's green. If you're a fan of Little Shop of Horrors, Kiki, get your hand out of the way. And right away, there's an almost perfect key right there. I would be fine going out with that right now. I'll show you how to do the actual background part of that in a little bit. Um, that's when we get into the MEs. But while I'm showing you the individual camera sources, um, I'll just show you how to do that right there. Um, you can come in on the spill suppression here. Um, if you need to kind of get some green in and out of the, uh, the outline of the shot, you can change the tolerance here. So if you don't have um, a perfect green screen like Kiki does over here, um, you can mess around with the tolerance to get a perfect key. You also have smoothness to kind of <coughs> fix the edges there. Um, so that's your key or there. You can also crop a source. So basically, um, let's say that someone has an open room off to the side that you don't want to see, or you want to crop something out. Or let's say you don't want to see Kiki in the shot for some reason. You can go to crop source, and you can take him from the right or the left and just crop her out. And now, because you did this up here where the individual sources are, um, no matter where you use this source here, um, it's going to be cropped. But I'm going to uncrop her for now. Give me one second. We just went through a lot up here. I'm going to take another look at questions. Oh, move my camera screen. Was I blocking that the entire time? I'm an idiot. Sorry about that. You know what? I think I have, I have a smaller version of me in this. Let me just do that permanently. Yeah, I'll fix that in a little bit. Um, I'm also going to do I'm going to put my comments up here. Sorry. I'm all alone here. I have some people in the comments, which I appreciate. Um, it is hard doing all of this at once. Here. Hey, Luke, um, if you're watching, feel free to give me a call if I do something stupid like that again. Uh, let's take a look at some questions. Um, can you use PTZ control with new tech for other kinds of cameras besides new tech cameras? Yes. Um, If you have a control stick, yes, you can use the joystick control the parameters. Um, put my camera in the preview window. Yeah, I realized that was a very stupid thing now, wasn't it? OK, moving on. Um, so that, that's most of what you can do with individual camera sources here. Um, you also do have something called uh, automation. Um, there's tracker, there's hotspots where basically you know, if you put your hand over a certain part of a screen where you have a green screen behind you, you can actually use that to do things like change to the next image or put up a graphic. Uh, I'm not going to show you that right now. That's a little bit more advanced. If we have some time later, I can show you that. Um, but you can do some very strong automation with TriCaster. <laughs> now, let's say there's too, many video, there's too many things for you up here. You maybe only need to see a few sources. If you click on Workspaces, um, you have all of these different choices of multi-view here. So here's one that only has four. Um, so now there's only four sources up here. My personal favorite, this is the one that I work with on my day-to-day -day basis. Um, it shows eight. I know my screen is over it. Shush. Um, but I'm going to go back to this <coughs> workspace here that has a lot just because it looks fancy. Um, hey, actually, um, hey, Chris, would you mind putting up your camera um, so I could show them how to do a PTZ? Let me make sure I don't have. Chris is just putting up the camera for a second. We'll say hi to him in just a second. Oh, I see what you did there. You just put it to black. Everyone say hi to Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, let's put your camera up here. Um, we have labeled PTZ over here. Uh, I don't know what this gray box is here. That might be your window, um, your, your, um, your return to me. Um, doesn't matter too much. Anyway, we've got Chris here. Let me make sure I don't have anything. There we go. Hello, Chris. So 
Uh, all you've got to do once you have the PTZ here is you've got pan tilt, you've got zoom, you have focus. Oh, you're, you're pointing in the direction. I know what you're doing. Oh, you want me? You want me to go that way? Up. Oh, are you going directions? Up. Oh, yep. There's there's your green screen. So we'll tilt back down on you. Your audio could. Oh, there we go. I'll try not to show your room here. Uh, uh, back, back, back. It's hard. I'm doing this super remotely here. Very good. Um, so you got zoom, focus, iris. Um, you could change the speed of all of these moves here. You could uh, do your white balance here. And also you have these preset shots here. So you can say, take. Um, you hit the little camera in the corner there. That's going to be this shot. We can get a little bit closer, hopefully not too close. Take another picture over here. And you could go between the two of these super easily. So you can set your shots before your show and then be able to go um, anywhere you want. Okay, uh, enough of you for now. I'm going to make you disappear again. Um, sorry for showing whatever was in the back of your room. Thank you, Chris. Okay, let's just get something else back here to work with. Yeah, let's go with Kiki. Okay, let's talk about um, program preview here. Um, so, yeah, I'm still not sure why, why that is there. Um, that's fun. Uh, Chris, do you want to see if you know why that's uh, popping up up there in the top right corner? I will. Otherwise, it'll be fine. I can totally work with, uh, without that. The joys of working remotely. It might just be something with Microsoft Teams. Oh, pointing in the in the safe direction. Whoops. My bad. Sorry. Uh, what does the camera look like? Um, yeah, fine. I'll, I'll just shrink my video here. That's really the best thing for us to do here. Give me one second here. Let's, let's see. This is ME1. Shrink. Because who really needs to see me anyhow? There's a really small version of me. Um, okay. Uh, please just crop yourself so we can focus on the clutter. Thank you, Luke. Okay, um, program preview. So again, program is what's going live. That's in this top one over here that has this really cool gray box on top of it. Um, and preview is um, this bottom row here. So again, that's where you do your prep. To change your shot and program, all you need to do is click. Click on any of these sources. Whoops, uh, Chris, it looks like I have lost remote control, possibly. Um, so, uh, Chris, let's see if you can give me a uh, control back on that. Oops. All right, give me one second. Oh, there is the ominous voice of Chris. Hi, Kiki. Kiki works at New Tech, and it's a fun name. So I like using Kiki. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Sorry about showing uh, whatever <laughs> definitely things were happening in the corner there. Um, OK, yep. So again, you just click on your source, and that'll let you change. So you've got my display. You've got a PC here, um, your individual sources, DDR1, DDR2, um, your graphics. You have everything here. Also in bank two over here, um, you have all of your frame buffers um, and also your MEs and graphics stuff again. Um, Ian, how are you doing NDI KVM over wide angle? Uh, wide, wide. I mean, we're using Microsoft Teams um, for that. Um, OK. So that's program preview. Now, how do you take something from preview and put it into program? That's when you move over to your, your transition things over here. So you've got over here, this is where you choose your transition. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But let's start with the basics. A take, that is just a cut. That means you're going from one camera to the other immediately. An auto is anything that's not a cut. So that, that could be a fade, that could be a wipe, that could be something cool. So we've got a fade here. You could also use this T-bar over here to do it manually. If you're doing music, things like that, um, you could definitely want to take advantage of that. Um, so how do you choose um, what your transition is if it's not just a basic take? Click on this little thing over here, and you'll see we have a bunch of different transitions over here. Here's one of my favorites. This is a alien hand. Three, two, one, alien hand. The most important thing in the TriCaster. What's actually cool about this is you can see the, the paper that it's holding is warping. Um, so you can do some really advanced transitions here. Um, and you can make those customly. There's software to do it. 
Um, I was just asked if sheep wipe is still a transition. I'm going to use this opportunity to show you that indeed it is. So there's plenty more transitions than this. Click on uh, just one of these nine grids here. Um, if you scroll down to transitions, you have all the basics. You have lines, block, box, clock, edge wipes, expands. You can do these things where actual things move. Um, you've got a bunch of fades. You can dip to black. You can flash through white. It's all in here. Um, but I think, it, is Sheep still here? It's probably in, oh, you know, it might be. I think there's actually one here in New Tech. Um, yes, there is a falling sheep animation. So just because you asked for it, bah! and these actually have sounds built into them. That was me doing a sheep sound. Um, but um, you can add uh, sound effects to transitions here. Uh, there's some really cool built-in um, animated ones. Um, let's see if there's one here that I want to show you. Um, oh, this turbine one's pretty cool. You got the turbine transition. I'm going to go ahead and do an auto on that. And that's just a really awesome animated transition. I don't know what video we're looking at here, but I'm sure those people are very cool. Um, so that's how you change your transitions. Um, if you need to change your speed on them, click on this little thing over here. You can do them slow, medium, fast, and you can actually manually change the time on them. How did I get the source into preview? Um, someone's asking. All you need to do is in the bottom row over here, click the source. It's that easy. Um, take, take. Auto, have fun. I'm going to change this back to a fade because I don't want to watch that turbine a million times. So we got a fade over there. Um, now, for your lower thirds, your graphics, any of your media players over here, um, these work in a similar way. Um, you've got your fade over here. Um, so you could fade in your graphics in and out. And any of those transition we used before, you can use right now. So here's one, here's one that'll have it slide in. People like to do this with graphics sometimes. Slide it in, slide it out. All sorts of fun. Um, so you could choose, again, any of these. Uh, I'm going to put this back to fade for now. So you can have, um, in, in the more advanced versions in the TC1, you've got four keyers that you can have up at once. So there we've got a crawl coming out of a frame buffer that could also come from an external uh, source. Um, so this is just showing you all the things that you could have up at once just using your downstream keyers. Now these keyers, these work in layers. Um, so basically, one's on top of another, is on top of another, is on top of another. Um, if you click on, a little gear pops up over here on the individual keyer. Um, you can actually change the position of these. So let's get this keyer up and pull this thing here. So you can use the positioner to move them around. If you were using the physical control surface, you can use that too. You could zoom in and out on them. You could rotate them in any direction. Whee! That's fun. Um, you could even use this thing to get really fun with it, get super 3D and fun. Um, you could also change the Z priority. Z priority um, is basically what layer it's in. So let's say that you have, um, let me pull up another one here. This box of Kiki again in the corner. Sorry, it's the same thing. Um, but I want Kiki to be uh, behind um, that lower third over here. Take the Z priority, just bring it up, and it'll actually change where that is. Uh, I'm going to change that back to zero for now. Uh, yes, red is hot. Green means ready to go. I don't know the official reason for that. I'm sure someone figured that a long time ago. Um, and we'll reset the positioner here. Um, also with the keyers, um, let me bring up now Kiki's key here. Let me put something different in the background here. Let's take uh, DDR1. You got DDR1 there, and we've got this um, Kiki over here in the corner. Let's first of all, let's bring her up, make her a little bit bigger over here. So we'll move her position. We will zoom, make her a little bit bigger. But you know what? I think we need to put Kiki in a box. Um, I want to have a border on her. So go down to here to border edge of shadows, turn that on. And now you can see that there's a shadow there. There's a couple presets here. There's a hard shadow. And of course, it goes black right when I'm trying to show color in the background. Good job. There's an arrow chart there that should show it a little bit better. Yep, you can see there's a border on that. Um, you could do custom borders. Um, you can do all sorts of things with this. Uh, let me just get back in here. Um, you can click on the plus sign. Um, there's the build your own border, but there's all these different colors, settings, um, the, the default ones, um, if you want it to be Chrome. 
Chrome is fancy. So here is Kiki with a Chrome outline. I think that's a good look for her. Okay, let's stop the border there. Okay, um, it's, uh, I'm hearing people saying you can do this in the ME. Yes, you can do these in the MEs. We'll explain that in a little bit. I'm just showing you the basic key functions for now. Now, how do you choose what you want to be in your key right now? Yeah, basically, you click on up here. Uh, right now, it says ME1 because that's what it's delegated to. Um, you can go to your inputs, and basically anything in your entire TriCaster, any of your remote sources, you can put over here. So I could change this to be DDR1 if I wanted it to be. Now it's showing itself twice. I'll leave that on ME1 just because it was there before. Oops, makes a fix. Okay. Um, let's see if we have any questions. I'm going to take a quick look. Um, let's see here. Can you save? Um, can you save these settings as a macro? Yes, you can. Um, uh, can you save settings as a macro? You can set it to things as a macro. Um, so it's not like you can save a profile of like all of the changes you made, but you can say, you know, change this to be, you know, in this location as a macro. Hey, Ben. Oh, yep, Chris. Uh, let me get you a little louder here because I think I said something wrong. Yes? So now that you're controlling my system, why don't you drag the mouse all the way over to the left? So go up on the switcher row. Oh, switcher row here. And you could do your preset screenshots. Oh, cool. I didn't know. So that. you could export those. OK, so you, you can't expo uh, can export all of those. So yay, technology. Or that's probably been there for a while and I've never used it. I think I made Chris too hot there. I'm sorry. Sorry, it's uh, too loud for everyone. But we wanted to hear you, so that's good. Um, let me just look at the QA here. Uh, how do you record in TriCaster? We'll talk about recording and individual camera angles in a little bit. Uh, am I still quiet? I shouldn't be quiet. You sound good. I sound good. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm getting a question here. How do you send broadcast camera SDI signals into the TriCaster Mini 4K through NDI inputs? Um, you need to use something called a, um, an NDI, uh, a new tech Spark unit. Uh, BirdDog also makes them. These are basically things that convert SDI or HDMI to be a network feed. Um, or the NC1IO. Yeah, and yes, there's new tech one io which is a physical rack-mounted unit um, that can have eight um, inputs, outputs. So there's plenty of ways to do that. Okay, uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, inputs, audio. Okay, we'll talk about uh, other reports in a little bit. Okay, so that's how you work with your keyers. Um, now, if you want to just do everything hot, you can punch them up right here. That's great. I'll bring that, you know, bring. I'll just keep the lower third. You could fade the lower third in and out hot in real time. Let's say you want to see what your, what your lower third is going to look like advanced. You want to make sure you spelt Chris's name correct. So if you click on this DSK one here or any of these other DSKs, um, that'll let you put it into preview over here. And then it won't go live until you hit take. So it'll move from preview to program. What is this good for? Um, let's say that I want to have um, DDR2 here. I want to pop up uh, a name with the person here, but not have it in the previous shot. As long as DSK1 is here, I could take it. It'll all be set up. It'll move from pro, uh, preview to program right away. Um, so that's how you can get some really clear, um, really clear, um, clean cuts between transitions and shots. Now, if you wanted to, you can still take the fade off and do that live, or you could do an auto, just get it back uh, from program to preview, um, and then just go to your other shot. I'm going to click on background. Uh, sorry, I'm going to just have background illuminated here. Background here. Background is your key to having a preview bus here. If you don't have background illuminated, what it means, let me bring one back up here. Um, it means that whatever you press here ain't going to show. Um, so a lot of people have that problem. Um, um, so if that's happening, just make sure that you have background set. OK. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to show here? Why don't we show some basic animation 
Uh, no, you know, I'll wait for that. I still want to show you the basic media stuff, then I'll show you some of the fancy stuff. Um, so let's talk about the media players. CDR1, so this is where you've got all your video. So um, how do you bring video into this? You press the plus sign. Um, this will show you all of your stuff um, that you recently recorded that we have in demo content here. Um, you would have a session for that for yourself. Um, there's sample stuff in here. Uh, so all you do, you take the footage that you need. Uh, let me just find, let me find one that I like. Let's find a fun one. Let me check NTSC. Let's see, we can do some boring charts. How about an Apache helicopter? Let's just bring that in over here. So now, right here in this media player, we have the Apache. So let's, we've got fun here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on that. And that's one of many ways to play this clip. Very cool Apache helicopter. I believe that was probably made in lightweight. Sorry, not gonna do Vegas footage. Um, okay, so down below over here, um, for those of you who have done any kind of media thing before, these will be familiar. You've got your stop, you've got play, you've got go to your next clip, go to your previous clip. Um, you've got a loop over here. You could change the speed of this entire DDR, of this entire bin over here. Um, so lots of things you could do there. Um, over here, um, you've got your playlist mode. Uh, so basically, if this is illuminated, um, it means that it's going to go automatically from, let me turn off autoplay over here. Um, it's going to go automatically from this Apache clip right into the next clip as soon as this is done. So you'll see it automatically goes to the next clip in that bin. This is good if you need to do some non-linear editing, if you want to basically bring a bunch of stuff together, or you just need a bunch of clips that run back to back. Um, now, if this is not selected, it means that once, you, once this Apache clip is done playing, I'll just run it to the end, it's just going to freeze. It's just going to stop right there. It's actually on loop, so it's not going to completely stop. But you get what I mean. Um, over here, you've got autoplay. Autoplay is a very cool feature. Uh, what it basically does, let me just get, um, get this into preview here. Um, if autoplay is selected, it means that this is going to automatically start playing as soon as you um, go to that source in program, it's here, anywhere. So right now, I, I got this arrow chart up here. You see it's paused right here. But as soon as I hit take, now that autoplay is selected, it's going to automatically start playing. Uh, if you're a traditional broadcast person, you're working in a regular control room, you're used to having, you have to say, roll tape, take tape. Um, but in this world, you don't need roll tape. Uh, you just take it and it'll work. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else I want to show you. In points, out points. Over here, um, you, first of all, you've got a playhead over here. You can choose um, where, where you want to uh, have your clip. You can just set an in point. That's where your clip is going to start. Move over here, set an out point, And now your clip is a lot shorter. It's just going to play that part that you had right over there. This is non-destructive. Oh, yes. So this is non-destructive. What this means is that that doesn't actually ruin your clip anywhere. Only in this media player at this moment in time um, is it doing that trim. So, you know, if I were to delete this clip and bring it back, it would just come back with its full, um, fully there. And again, you could reset the in points, reset the out points, even once you've already set those clips. Um, Chris's audience, let me just uh, bring him down a little bit. Can you store recordings into the external hard disk or remote servers? The answer is both. Um, you, there are uh, multiple hard drives, or, or there's at least one hard drive in every TriCaster. Um, you could delegate it to record there. You can also record over NDI um, to, to anything that could record NDI. That could be as simple as a PC or as fancy as, a, um, a TC, uh, as a, um, an NC1 input-output unit. Um, you can also use HDMI SDI out to go to an external recorder, which I always do for backup. You can also um, record to just a, a hard drive, uh, any old hard drive, well, a strong enough hard drive. I'll, uh, I'll show you some of that quickly right here, just while we're talking about it. So on the records over here, um, you would basically just go over here, change the file path, choose where you want to put it, call it a day. Um, name and everything. Whatever has this check mark next to it is going to record. You have four mixes, so you can basically record four different kind of fancy things at once. You can take your program preview and mix one, maybe your mix effects in another input, uh, <coughs> in another mix. 
Um, so basically, maybe you want to record um, a double box the entire time. In addition to your main program preview, you can do it there. I'm going to close that there. Can you bring in a video clip with a transparent background? Um, yes, you could bring in video with a transparent background. Um, that's actually what's happening here, this buffer here. Um, this might as well be a video. It's, um, it's just transparent um, all the way up top and down below it is uh, physical video. Um, you can record to multiple drives at the same time and externally. Um, okay, clips time. Let's talk a little more about what you can do with clips. Right click over here. How are we on time? Okay, nine o'clock. Right click over here. You can cut, copy, paste, remove, all of those things. I'm not going to explain to you. If you don't know how to do that, I'm not giving you permission to use a TriCaster anymore. <coughs> and, okay, um, split at current frame. What this is good for, let's say you've got this Apache helicopter clip here. It has two parts to it, um, and you want to use them maybe at different times. Right click, split at current frame, and that's going to turn it into two separate clips. Good job, Apache helicopter. Let's right click again, see what else we can do here. Uh, you could change your audio levels, um, so you can make them louder, softer, and mute them completely. You could change the speed of this individual clip, make it slower, faster. Um, over here, use current frame as icon. This, um, this is what lets you, um, you know, let's actually go to this one over here, this new text show and beyond. I don't know what, what's happening right there. That thumbnail you see there, it's not doing it for me. But maybe I know that it's supposed to be this word show. I know what show means. So right click, use current frame as icon, and now it'll change that frame as the icon down there. Um, you can also send, um, if this were a still uh, or an animation, um, you can send it right from here to one of your frame buffers. Um, you can add it to export media, um, which basically, I'm not going to show you the details of that now, but you can basically send that clip right immediately to YouTube or a hard drive or anywhere else. Um, so that is clips in a nutshell. Uh, I'm not showing every single thing here. There's too much to show. Some of you are going to want to go to sleep at some point. Um, over here in the graphics player, <coughs> um, one more thing here in the DDR. Uh, if you move your mouse to the side of the screen, you've got all these different bins. So up top here, we got another cheeky clip. Two here, um, down here, you've got a bunch, some empty ones. You can use this basically to organize your footage. Maybe you have different kinds of videos you shoot all the time. You have different shoots. Um, different segments. And you could rename, import, export these, or clear them. Um, so, you know, if you lose everything, you can always get it back. Okay. Um, okay, so graphics. Here's a lower third. How do you pull this in? Click on the plus sign. There's a bunch of lower thirds already in here in titles. There's all these different templates. Let's see what content concentric is. I'll go with this one for now. We got a lower third here. Uh, let me do one that has an actual lower third built into it. Arrow. Uh, I'm getting Neptune as a request. So let's see, Neptune. Neptune. Okay, sure, Neptune's nice. Let's go with it. There we go, we have Neptune. And up top over here, you see it has the top line and a bottom line. How do you change this text? Right click. Go to edit title. And welcome to the graphics editor. So all you do, company team name here. We're going to call this Oprah Winfrey. Let's spell her name correct. She deserves better. And then we'll go to the bottom line here. Very cool person. So right there, um, as soon as we close out of it here, should see it. Yep, there you go. You'll see it um, change right in front of your eyes. Now, another uh, way you can do this is the double A. Font, size, all that stuff. Um, if you need to make a bunch of lower thirds in a row, click save and duplicate. That'll just bring you to the next one. Bob Barker because I don't know why he's the first person that came to mind. Um, and you could go between your titles here so you can see them all. Um, so the, um, that's basic graphics. Now, one of my favorite things in TriCaster is the smart things you can do with it. There's an official name for this. I don't know it off the top of my head. Data link. Change that on the top of your fly while you're recording. But this is very cool. This is the magic here. Hit percent sign. Now you have a whole bunch of things here. 
um, that you can use to feed this graphic here. Um, everything from clip names to the time of day. I'll just put in the time right here. So now it's 949. Uh, you can see up here, it's taking it right off of this time over here. You can use this for time of day clocks. You can use this um, uh, for a countdown clock. Uh, another cool thing you can do with this is you can do um, web keys, which are basically from Google Chrome. You can literally copy paste into this. Let me get, um, let's get, what do I want to do here? DDR1 or DDR2. DDR2. Uh, let's do DDR2 clip alias. So now, over here, it's going to take the name of whatever clip is playing in DDR2. So you can use this to add credit to clips. You can use, um, you can use this to add you know, lower thirds to clips. You can use this with someone's name. So you can literally, you could go into the, the PTZ 4K. You could say, this is Chris, write his name in there. Um, and that will automatically go right into your lower third every time you, um, every time that person comes on camera. So you don't even need a separate graphics person here. Um, you can do custom graphics. I'm not going to show you how to do that now, uh, but you can do all of that. Sound, all, all the same things here. Um, sorry, um, your graphics. 2, DDR2, all the same. Frame buffers, um, basically here they have some animated ones. So if we were to go to frame buffer 1, that actually involves going to the second bank over here. Bank 2. And buffer 1. So there's an animated thing. I like to use this. My, one of my, um, there's a couple of built-in ones here that I really like. Um, where are the buffers in here? Frame buffer animations. Um, so in, oops, light effects. Wait, come on. The joys of remote working light effects. So there's a bunch in here. Like I like this red one, for example. It's a nice kind of slow moving pink, um, pink drift here. So you can see it moving there. And that's a loop. Um, yes, this webinar will be available later. Um, Dennis, the 460 has this capacity if you upgrade to advanced edition, not natively, uh, for the, for the um, text lower thirds. Um, so other things you can put in buffers, you can put in lower thirds that animate. Um, if, if you need an animation to happen, let me lose this key. So you can see it, it automatically, every time you go to it, it'll pop, uh, it'll pop on with animation. Um, you could do things again here, like um, like crawls if you want to build those in. Um, all sorts of things you can do here. Um, to bring in your own, just click on the plus sign. And you know, uh, you can only do short clips with this, so you need to uh, export them safely from um, the animation store creator, which comes with TriCaster, um, or just have them formatted correctly. Also, you could put in any still PNG here with transparency. Again, really good for like bugs in the bottom corner of the screen, any of that kind of thing. Audio mixer. Over here, again, you got all your channels. You could mute them, unmute them. Um, if you highlight over the top over here, uh, Chris, are you trying to do something or are you just uh, fast moving? Don't, don't, un don't I'm not unmute me. I'm unmute you, I promise. Uh, I promise I won't show anything stupid again. Um, over here, um, you got, so that gear, that gear that's kind of universal. Um, you could change your individual audio levels here. If you're using an, you know, an SDI signal that has multiple audio channels built in, you'll get both there. You could change your, um, your pan on these. Uh, I'm a lazy person. A lot of the time I just do productions in mono. Um, and uh, so you could drag these around. You could change how they are. Um, and you could reset if anything goes wrong. Uh, you can add an audio delay if it's not matching up with your video. You could rename the audio inputs. Um, you can also choose where this audio is coming from. Is it coming from your local inputs? Is that audio coming from the video source, input one? You could also bring an audio from the PTZ or anything else. I'm not going to do that. Don't worry. Um, now over here in processing, um, there's full EQ in here. You've got a compressor limiter if you need to make people sound better. A noise gate, so a lot of times, a lot of things will have a low level hum, hiss, whatever. You can use the noise gate here to get rid of it. Um, you can also use this as a kind of an auto mix. Um, 
So if people are talking, you know, when people are talking, you can turn on, but when they're not talking, you can choose a certain level um, and you can only have their sound happen after that. Um, there's fancy things you could do with this with macros. We're not going to get to it right now. Um, I can hear Chris. He is sometimes correcting me. Um, I, yes. Um, audio routing over here. Um, this lets you choose where your audio sources go to. Um, so you have a couple aux outputs physically on TriCasters and also digitally. Um, so you've got your master over here. You've got your auxes uh, over here. You can clearly reset them. Um, something that I do a lot is I will take my master and I will, if you're using an external mixer um, and not doing it through Dante or anything fancy, you need to uh, reset the master so have it completely clear. Um, and then uh, your, all of your sources have to go through your mixer. And then input one is going to be master and then not have any of your auxes up here. Um, that's a little fancy, a little confusing. Um, I'm not going to go through the details of that right now. Um, okay. That is audio in a nutshell. Um, okay, why don't we get to the, yeah, let me uh, look at the Q&A and then we will get to the Emmys, the fun part. Uh, can you view the lower third in the preview window, not program? Yes, uh, Sam Salerno, you can uh, figure that all out in preview. Um, what camera was Chris using for movement? I'm going to guess that he was using the uh, new tech uh, uh, NDI PTC camera. I, I think there's a name for it. I forget what that name is. Um, but there's many other versions you can do. Um, biggest difference between the TC1 and the Mini, uh, largely processing, also uh, more inputs, outputs, screens, and stuff. Um, just a generally stronger unit, but the Mini is plenty strong. Um, also, yes, it does cost more money. Uh, what's also cool is that it can use any of the control surfaces with any of the TriCasters. So you can use the giant, giant, uh, you know, the, the multi-input switcher ones with your TriCaster Mini, especially now that everything's all NDI. Can you touch on the current file hierarchy? Story? I'm not going to talk about file hierarchy right now. Um, it's all there. We can talk about that later if we have some time. Um, one other thing to point out here, you have switcher mode and express mode. Express mode basically takes away all your preview, and basically whenever you click, right as you click, it'll make that transition. This is good for students who aren't good at this yet, or also if you load this up on, if you're remotely controlling this on an iPad using NDI KVM, or you have a touchscreen computer, you can just touch and go, um, and that's in express mode. Okay, let's get to the MEs, the fun part. So, uh, TriCaster, most of them have four MEs built in. So let's go to ME1 over here. When you click on the ME1 over here, um, then you want to click on ME1 up here. And that's going to show you all of basically the settings for this ME1. How do you, ch um, so what does ME stand for? ME stands for mix effects. <coughs> um, so mix means basically you just have a program preview. Um, to activate that, you just do something that has a transition uh, when you click on this thing here. What is this good for? Maybe you're outputting to a projector. That's not going to your main feed, but that's going to a projector in your room. Um, that is, um, so you, you can basically completely control that through here. Do transitions, do um, anything that you could down below, you can do up top over here. Um, so you could it's add. It's just a sub mixer. Uh, oop, Chris, what's up? It's like an additional submixer. Yes, an additional submixer. Um, that is a wonderful way to put it. Uh, Chris does these, uh, these trainings every day. I do them very infrequently. Um, you might be asking why am I doing this, not Chris, because I wanted to do it, because I wanted to talk to all of you people with no one actually talking back to me. Um, it's weird. It's weird that I just said, I'm going to do a TriCaster training session and not have anyone pay me to do it. But it's fun. I do this for fun. Um, and you know that I'm not just a sales spieling you. Um, this is how I use it now. I do everything. Uh, okay. So, yep, you got all your sources over here. You can use all of your keys just like you could down below. Let's set this to uh, me, uh, media players, um, uh, graphics one. There, just like before, you've got your key up there. Um, you can, again, everything basically works the same as down below, so I'm not going to get into the details for a mix. But 
Now let's get into an effects. So this four over here, this is a four layer input. So we have four layers to work with here. So we are gonna build a double box. Um, so um, this is a layer thing here. There's, let me just clear these two inputs that are all black. Yeah, okay. So our background layer, I'm gonna want our background layer to be that moving buffer. So I'm gonna make that buffer one. So I'm gonna click over here actually and <coughs> set it to buffer one. So now that's our background layer. Now in layer two here, I'm gonna call it C. I'm gonna put uh, DDR2, because why not? Now there's DDR2 there. How do I change the size of DDR2 over here? Click on this little thing over here, that little four-way arrow, open up the positioner. Um, just like I was showing you before, you could change all the size. So I'm gonna zoom on this over here and I'm gonna position it off to the right over here. Now you have that, and you know what? Let's add a border just for the hell of it. Okay, there is your DDR2 as your second layer there. Now let's do uh, another layer over here. Uh, let's do DDR1, Apache helicopter. And let's make this smaller and move it over just a little bit. And you know what? I wanna add a little bit of rotation to this one. Oops, uh, I just clicked off there. I'm gonna add a little bit of rotation, some Y axis, I think, is that what I wanna do? Yep. Let's give it some uh, perspective there. And there you go. There is a, the simplest possible kind of double box you can do. Um, you could also, again, with all these borders, um, you could do edges, you could even feather the edges if you wanna get really fancy there. Um, so that's basically the simplest way to build a double box. And again, you can do four of these with each ME. What's also cool about MEs, um, you could uh, re-enter them into each other. I'm gonna show you how to do a green screen, which is one of the times where that becomes very useful. Uh, so I'll open up ME2 here. So how do you, cho how do you choose um, which of these you wanna be working with? Click on that four. I'm gonna click on um, just this one over here. Um, and we're gonna do a green screen. Um, you know what? I'm gonna actually show you how to do green screen with a virtual set. Virtual sets are awesome. One of the strongest parts about TriCaster. Let's pick one here. Fright forward. I don't know what this one is. I've, yeah, let me find one that I like using. Corner talk. A um, lot of pre-built-in ones here. Nightly show are pretty good. Okay, let's do let's do nightly show over here. So I'm gonna bring this one in here. I'm gonna bring in ME2 just into program so you can all see it. Um, so now over here, um, you'll notice it turned into a two layer thing over here. Layer one is always gonna be your person. Layer two is always gonna be some sort of TV or something. Let's, uh, I'm gonna bring in Kiki over here so we can see it. So now DDR2 over there. So let's put Kiki in DDR2 up top over here. And then in the uh, TV screen, let's put uh, graphics too. Just so there's something there. Um, it looks like there's already some motion here. Let's just reset this. Okay, cool. So let's actually zoom in on her. I'll show you a little bit of that virtual sets while we're doing this right now. You can use this over here, zoom in on the virtual set. Full quality zoom on her over there. And you can use the positioner to um, bring it all over the place here. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so we can actually, that green screen I said I was gonna show you before, I'm gonna show you now. Oops, it's uh, opposite so I'm doing it wrong. So we're gonna take this DDR2 over here. <laughs> we're gonna click on that. We're gonna go to image. We're gonna go to keying. And that green screen we set before, I'll just, I'm gonna reset it and start it from scratch again just so you can all see. Click on the color, drag it over right by her head. Bam, perfect key, right there. She's on the set, there's a reflection. Um, it's really cool, like literally her arm movements and everything. Let me lower this key so you can see it. A really professional look, oops, uh, DDR2. We can move her around up here just so you can see. And her reflection is following her around in real time. People believe that, they think you're actually at a real set. <laughs> How is the reflection there? Um, have you ever heard of fairies? Fairies are magical little creatures that put the reflection there. 
uh, reflection is you build it into the virtual into sets and you can also build it into custom sets um, using Photoshop layers and things. Um, that is a lesson for another time. So now we have this um, over here. And again, you can put whatever you want in the background in that TV screen. There's the Apache helicopter. Um, I was talking to you about re-entering MEs. So now let's go back to ME1 and preview. So in preview, let me lo I'll lose this little third here. So now let me just also put a different shot into that. Um, I want um, DDR1 to be on the left over there and graphics to be on the right. Okay, so you see on the on, on preview over here, we have these two windows. So now I want to put a yeah. screen screen on this virtual set into this where it says new tech over here. All you got to do, I think that's layer, um, layer three I have over here. Just pop ME2 in there and right away there, you have a double box that has a virtual set in it. So you can re-enter these as, as many as you want. It's really awesome. Um, a good thing for this is, let's say you're a news anchor tossing to a green screen, um, a weather reporter, you can do that here. Um, let's get into some motion here. Um, let's cut back to... Uh, um, so... Zooming is fun. Um, you can also use comp to get really fancy with this. So let's say this is the main shot here. Click on comp. <coughs> um, just like we did before with the PTZ. Take that little camera shot over there. It'll put a screenshot. Oh, let me um, get ME1 in uh, program also. Just so we're all in the same place. Comp ME1 here. So now I want to take this box on the right here, and I want that to go full screen. So I'm going to take... Layer C, and I'm going to, to the easy just kill the position. Uh, we'll ignore the fact that that box is on the right for right now. Um, hit close, hit comp, and take another screenshot of this over here. So now click on this one over here. She gets smaller, and over here, she gets bigger. And you know what, why don't we get even fancier with this? Let's take this box over here, this one that um, has that graphic that I'm not liking. That's in source B. I'm just gonna move that off to the left. I'm gonna have that one fly off. Um, you know, I'm gonna have it zoom and fly off at the same time. Let's have it zoom. And just kind of fade it into oblivion over there. Oops. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go right back to comp. I'm gonna re. Uh, I'm gonna reset this one. Take that picture again. Just write right over it. So now, there it is with the box, and there it is without the box. I did something wrong in there uh, with the rebuilds. I'm not sure what I did. But point being, you can move boxes all over the place. Super easy. Um, you could do it as a cut. Um, you could also change the speed on those. Uh, bring them in and out. Really painstakingly slow or fast. Um, so yeah, you can do a lot of those. You can also use this. Let's go to just her uh, ME2 over here. You can also do this comp for shots here. So uh, am I going to screw you up if I do this? Uh, You're good. I can do the bottom ones over here. here. Um, so I'm going to take a picture over here in 15. So here's the main shot there. And now I'm going to do a nice big zoom out over here. Oop, that's the opposite of out. And there she is in that zoomed out shot. So I'm Take 16. 16? Yep. Okay. So now we got 15 and 16 here. So all you need to do to go between these is click. And you've got that zoom exactly how you want it. And come back out. Um, and there's your zoom over there. Really smooth, really easy. Um, you can set as many of those as you want. You can have a left shot, a right shot. You can go all over the place with those. Um, I think we'll have some time to talk about macros. You can control those with macros. You can control those from the control surface directly. Uh, very versatile there. Um, that is, in a nutshell, your gears. One more thing I want to show uh, with the virtual sets. Let's bring up ME3. Um, in addition to all of those virtual sets, they also have things like double boxes built into this. So if you don't want to build that manual double box on your own, uh, what's one that has it? I think the day report has one. 
Here, Helix. So what's cool about this kind of double box, one that's built in a virtual set, no matter where you move your clips over here, <laughs> your things over here, they're gonna stay within that box. When you do it the manual way I did, um, it's not really easy to keep things within a box like that. Uh, but here it'll stay within the box. So if you're framing people up quickly for Skype, things like that, it makes it really easy. Can you buy additional virtual set stuff? Yes, same principle for four boxes, just add another layer. Um, just look through the chat here. Okay, we are good. Um, okay, so that is your Emmys and your Kiers in a very quick nutshell. Um, does anyone have any questions? I'll open the floor to questions. Uh, we'll get to macros, and then I think we will be pretty close to the end. I'll show you stream record and stuff. Um, but I'll just open the floor to some questions if we have any. Otherwise, I will just keep powering through this. It's weird. Normally, I get to um, talk to people in person and do stuff in real time. Uh, Wirecast versus this package. I think Wirecast is good for different purposes. For full productions, I really like using TriCaster. Wirecast I use for much simpler things. I also don't always trust the computer that Wirecast is on. Um, Chris is going to come in here and probably say something. Or he just wanted to see himself. Let's see. Are you, are you doing something or are you just having fun? I'm just keeping myself so you can me. Okay. Um, uh, wait, so, so I could what? So you can use me in the production. Oh, so I can use you in the production. Great. I'll put you into something. Let's, let's put you into, um, let's replace Kiki with you. Kiki's busy right now, so we'll put the PTZ 4K right there. There he is in layer two. Let's use the comp to zoom in on him to that shot. Yeah, let's actually, I'm just going to re-pull a key on you because even though it's already basically perfect, uh, PTZ up keying, keying, bring that right over over here. First of all, look, look at his background right now. Look how there's a big shadow there. I'm not here to insult your lighting, um, but I am here to show you that you got a basically perfect key right here, right away. And this is where cropping a source could be good. Um, so you see on the left and right of his frame there, there's some kind of garbage there. Um, and not the stuff all the way that I accidentally showed before. So I'm just going to come in on the left and right, crop those out. And now you have a perfect key there. You can see him moving with the set. It's fancy. It's magic. And you see that going on there. Um, how am I putting this to Zoom via TriCaster streaming or external? I am using actually a Blackmagic mini recorder to take my iMac Pro that's showing this screen, which is going into my TriCaster so I could add my stupid face into it. And that's going back into the Blackmagic. You can actually use NDI has um, a whole suite I knew Chris would like when I said that. Um, you can use NDI, um, I forget what it's called, the webcam version of it, uh, NDI. Virtual input. NDI virtual input, yep. And that will let you use uh, NDI right into, um, right into basically any software that can use a webcam. Um, NDI is super, super powerful. Just, I, don't, I realize I didn't very much describe NDI. NDI is basically um, network video. It's a new tech protocol. Um, you can use it. Um, it not just TriCaster stuff has NDI, it's all over the place now, but cameras have it, uh, computer has it, you can output it from Skype. There's physical boxes that'll convert SDI, HDMI to NDI. Um, you could output NDI to other things. It's really, really versatile. Um, it is very much the future uh, of broadcast. You can use this, you know, if you're at a school, you can have a camera in another classroom. Um, and as long as you're on the same network, that could come right back to you. Um, really fancy. There's a lot that you can do there. Someone says it's kind of like the Dante of video. That works. Chris, anything you want to add on that just because your face is on screen and you do this for a living? Uh, yeah. NDI is a super robust protocol. Okay. We'll go with that. Um, okay. Any other questions here? We got a fan of the Kumia show here. Was it green screen? Yes, it was Kumia show. How did I build a studio? We can talk about that afterwards offline. Tweet me about that. Um, record, you just hit record stream and code. Let's talk about ways that you can stream. Um, it comes with um, a bunch of presets here, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, all that fun stuff. You can also add your own RTMP. Um, so that can go to anywhere you want to stream. Um, so basically, uh, we'll, we'll make a new preset here. 
custom. You put in your uh, stream ID, username, password, any of that stuff. Um, if you do this stuff, you'll know what this all means. If you don't, don't worry about it. You can just use your Facebook preset here. I'm not gonna set this up completely right now, but basically you log into Facebook, you choose what page you post into, post your title description, it'll start streaming right away. Um, you could uh, change your settings here, um, your resolution, your, um, your quality, your audio bitrate, all that stuff. Um, and what's really cool in premium access is you can actually change the, um, uh, this isn't just for 16 by nine production, you could do 19 by six vertical video, square video, all the weird different things. Wonderful, awesome feature. I wish I had premium access in my day-to-day -day life. <coughs> New tech, <coughs> be nice to me. <coughs> um, and uh, that's basically what lets, you know, you can do awesome production and you can do multiple things at once. You could have an ME that's doing vertical. Uh, you could have an ME that's doing horizontal. That's right, Chris, you can do both of those, right? Yep, so you can literally use your Emmys to completely reposition stuff. Um, okay, you also have a web browser in here. Really, really useful. Um, I use this to copy paste stuff all the time. Um, also, if you need to set anything up, uh, sometimes you can do here. Don't use this web browser for anything during production unless you really, really have to. It's not really meant for that. Um, but I use it to copy paste stream keys a lot. Um, I use it to Google myself because I like seeing where I am in search results. Uh, don't use it for much more than that. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to talk about? Oh, you, um, you can use different presets again for different things. So you can stream one thing to Facebook, one thing to YouTube, um, or you know, maybe one thing behind a paywall. Maybe in an ME you build something that has an overlay that says, if you want the version without this stupid thing over it, if you want people to pay, you can send that behind a paywall and have another one without the graphics. Um, you can get really creative, really fancy with that. Um, let's see, what else here? Um, also, just uh, do we have the um, uh, some of the premium access stuff here, Chris? Yeah, I click on that. So premium access is like the super duper version of everything. Uh, it's a, it's a paid upgrade. It lets you do all sorts of things. It gets you better access to everything. Uh, it has like a scoreboard feature. I'm not going to show you everything, but uh, I will show you here is the switcher. This is a switcher here that's gonna work on any browser. You can use this on an iPad, on a, on a Surface, on a phone, anywhere. Um, so you could just click away and literally control your show from here. You could control what all of this stuff looks like. There's all sorts of features here. I'm not gonna get into this on live panel here because it gets fancy intricate, but a whole lot of control here. Um, lots of other people could tell you about that. Uh, try swiping. Try swiping. I don't know if I could swipe with a mouse. You wanna try swiping? Are you able to swipe on your side? Swiping more meant for when you're doing um, You can you can swipe when you use it at touch interface. Yep, swipe, touch, all cool. Um, some other premium access features, <clears throat> I'm not gonna show you right now, um, but there's actually um, a, a thing that'll let you take a Microsoft Word document, um, literally type up your script in real terms, say things like go to camera two, without any fancy coding, and it'll go to camera two when you get there in the script. You roll a prompter in the corner, really cool. Not gonna show that right now, just because we're uh, really late on time right now. Um, let's take a couple other questions here. I'll show you macros. We'll do some more Q&A, then we'll call it a day. Uh, if you wanna fuss around on the screen there while I'm bringing up uh, macros, while I'm bringing up uh, some questions, you can do that, Chris. Is there a multi-viewer and a virtual GUI that can be given access to remote for at-home production? Um, there are ways to set everything up for at-home production. Um, people are doing that a lot right now, especially with coronavirus. They have their TriCaster set up remotely. In fact, what I'm doing right now, I'm using NDI KVM. That's exactly how I'm using this production right now. What else here? Any plan to demo talk show Skype integration? I don't want to deal with that right now. You basically just turn it on and it works. Um, uh, do, do, do. How do you pull in Zoom callers, Google Hangout callers through NDI tools? Um, I just either screen share my screen um, uh, through NDI or I like to even do hardwired inputs. Uh, is it the oh, there's Chris on the cool background. You look a lot better that way, don't you? Just doing all the fuzzy stuff there. Um, okay, we'll get to macros, which are a very strong part of this. Then we will just go to Q&A the rest, and then you can all go to sleep. Uh, how can you have a live score when streaming a game? Um, you can either use um, 
uh, there's data, data, link. data, data link. Um, and that, um, basically it takes a spreadsheet, um, or, uh, any, you know, uh, something that's designed to go explicitly with it. Um, and it just updates in real time with your score thing. Um, also, um, I think there, there's software I believe lets you just like press uh, score up one, score up two, things like that. Macros. Macros are super duper powerful. Macros basically let you control anything, any series of commands through a single click. Um, in fact, I'm using macros on that little, um, on the, um, on the um, X keys that I'm using instead of my control surface. Um, I'm using that as basically an external macro pad. And that lets me shoot off a whole bunch of different commands without even needing a control surface, just using a mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to make a new um, live, live demo macro over here. So uh, I'm going to record a macro that is going to change to a different source, and then it's going to add a lower third in that order. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a new macro here. I'm going to call it Ben's Super Duper Cool Macro. Deluxe Extreme Deluxe with an X. Okay, so we got this macro here. I'm going to hit record. And now I'm just going to use this thing like I want to be using it. Uh, it just uses like a regular old TriCaster now. So I'm going to change this to, I want this to go to ME2. And then when ME2 pops up, I want to add this lower third here for Oprah Winfrey. I'm going to go ahead and stop that record. So now I am going to lose this key just so we can see the example. Go to a different shot here, all different things over here. And now I'm going to go and play back. Where did that macro go? Ben Super Duper. So now I'm going to go play back this macro. I'm going to hit play here. It brings him up. And it's going to, oh, I have this going speed in real time. And yep, it bought the lower third there. And it's doing that all there. Um, you could change the speed of a macro. So you could change it to snapshot, for example. That means everything's going to happen all at once. So now let me just change, let me take all of this off so we're back to just as if we were on a different shot. Go ahead, start that macro. Bam, all of those things happened at the exact same time. Um, now, if you want to set a key to trigger this, something on your X keys on your external macro panel, um, or just a key on your keyboard, you can click here to set trigger. I'm going to do a really uh, fakakta one because I don't want to ruin any of yours. I'm going to just call this shift command option four. So you can see that that's what happens here. So if I were to hit shift command option four, that's what's going to pop over there. But if you had X keys, do you have any macro? You have a, anything that I can like just press a macro button? No, no okay. Um, well, that's how you do macro panels. Um, again, you could change the speed of it 100, 200%. So sometimes you'll want to you know, create your macro slowly but run it at 400% so it all runs faster. So you get fancy with that. And again, you could change your any, basically anything that you have control over in the TriCaster, you have control over with macros. Um, you can also really get into the nitty gritty here, get into the coding of these macros. Um, that's for fancier stuff. Not going to talk about that right now. Um, I think I've hit all of the basics here. Let me see if there's anything else. Um, oh, importing media, the most basic thing. You want to safely import your media so TriCaster transcodes it into a nice safe format. You hit import media, you hit add, you find it. You can either use your browse to find it uh, wherever it is. Uh, I'm going to bring in one that we already have here just because I don't want to go on it, go anywhere else. Uh, we'll bring in just this random thing here. Um, so you can do a fast import if you're not in live production, um, a slow import if you're, uh, uh, sorry, a fast, yeah, a, a slow import if you're in live production. That'll make sure it doesn't tax your system too much. Um, and you can also automatically add stills and clips to a media player. <laughs> this is great. Let's say you're bringing a lot of clips really fast. You know, your editor's bringing them in for breaking news. You can hit add clips to over here and uh, add clips to DDR2. So I'm going to do a fast import right now. It's importing this clip right now. It's a three-minute clip. Um, I probably would have chosen a shorter one uh, if I uh, was smarter. But in a few short seconds, that's going to show up in your DDR2. And it's going to be really exciting when it happens because it just is. Um, I'll just let that sit here. Um, yeah, safely import your media. The you can close way, out. Yep, you can close out, and it's still going to import. So you'll see it pop up there as soon as it's done. <laughs> you can do multiple clips at once, all that fun stuff. Um, the one way that you can crash a TriCaster, 
other than using a hammer is if you bring in, you know, really badly formatted clips. Um, in fact, I was running, um, I, I work for Sports Illustrated now. I was running draft footage um, and I was a very bad person and I brought in some bad clips uh, and it caused me a little problem there. So I made sure to uh, import everything. And there you go. There's that clip right in there. Imported, safe, good to go. Let's look through a couple more questions. Um, Chris, while I skim through the questions, um, is there anything that you want to throw in that you want to add? Uh, it's impossible to get through every feature of this thing in even two hours. What, you, what you'll learn with this, with TriCaster, is you'll only use a couple of features, but you'll use those a lot. But it's definitely good to know how to do these things, when to do these things, why to do these things. Even if you're not a TD, if you're a comedy writer and you want to learn how to do green screen and you know that can be done, uh, if you are a producer and you want to know that you can do a double box or you want to know that you can do these things, uh, it's really useful to know the tech even if you're not the one operating. Uh, a couple questions that I see here. Um, you can add media from a Mac. You can actually add media from uh, anywhere over a network um, and you can actually pull clips even from the network. Just don't do that while you're in a live production. Uh, let's see. Do I use PC One for Sports Illustrated or Mini? I'm actually using a old 460 because that's what I took before uh, before any of this went down. Oh, do I have a bigger version? Here's a bigger version of me here because of course we need more high consumer base. Uh, why do good things happen to bad people? Um, the programming of everything. <laughs> um, can you pull a media from another network? Yes. Can you import without leaving live production? Yes, only with advanced or the TC1. Um, will macro go to certain graphics like replay or only the one that's selected? It'll go to what macros will go to whatever you tell them to go to. They are very, what you do is what it records. It's that simple. Um, talk show demo. I'm not going to demo talk show. It's, it's literally you, you pop up Skype and it works. Um, Google questions here. Give me a second here. And what's nice is that I have zero live viewers on the uh, Twitter stream I'm doing of this. Um, okay, not a whole lot of questions there. Um, how many Skype callers in, uh, in queue at a time? The talk show does four, but you could do many more than that. Um, if you use other talk shows, uh, NPI, anything like that. Would you risk getting a used TriCaster Mini um, for, for 4K? Um, try to get, if you're buying used, get it from someone authorized. Send them out to get it fixed. Um, add, um, TriCaster has, um, uh, uh, what's the insurance? Why am I blanking on the name of the insurance? Um, Protech. Protech. Uh, Protech is really good, worth every penny. Uh, they have replaced TriCasters overnight for me when I've had things go wrong. Um, so definitely a good service. They, they'll, they'll help you on phone support and everything. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, I use Sony MDR 75 or 60. <laughs> um, I think that is it in a nutshell. Um, any other questions? You could put them into the Zoom chat. Um, Chris, um, thank you very much for helping me out here. Um, if any of you have uh, further questions on anything, um, I can help you get in touch with, touch with all of these people. I'm going to send out a survey afterwards um, that'll help even more with that. Um, I'm happy to answer questions about this stuff on Twitter um, as well as uh, any other time. Um, Tri uh, TriCaster stuff is awesome. I Again, they did not pay me. They didn't even ask me to do this. I'm doing this because I wanted to show all of you how to do this. There are lots of jobs happening with TriCaster right now. Uh, I am giving up jobs left and right because I just don't have time. Um, uh, but you could do, um, yeah, just a lot going on with TriCast right now, even other things. Again, I'm not paid by TriCast, so I can tell you this. Learn Wirecast. I have the A10 Mini Pro here. There's lots of other ways to do this stuff. Um, but the best all-in-one solution is, I mean, far and ahead TriCaster. Uh, at its price point, at its, at its abilities here, it basically, there's nothing it doesn't do that I want it to do. They even added like my dream feature, which is RTMP ingest or SRT ingest, uh, which means you could take something like a live view or a remote signal 
and bring it right into the TriCast without needing any separate server or anything, um, which is really awesome. Uh, Burden is awesome. Sure, Doug. Um, this will be available on demand somewhere at some point. Um, OK, that is it for now. What I will do is just to leave Chris alone here. I will leave Chris here. I'm going to stick around on Zoom for a couple more minutes asking questions. Thank you all so much for watching. This will be available on demand somewhere, somehow. And uh, we will take it from there. Let me put my camera on. There is me. Thank you, Chris. Okay, is Chris getting a spinoff? Tuesday nights at 8 on Fox. Answering questions here exclusively in the Zoom chat. Um, thanks, Tom Ben Chris. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you able to do all this COVID work from home? I am absolutely able to do this from home. I, I wish I uh, brought up a picture of my home studio right now. I have five monitors in here. I have an audio mixer. I've got my X keys to save space. I've got my live view solo so I could do broadcasting uh, reliably. I've got a talk show so I can do everything I possibly need to do. Um, <laughs> I've been displaying on a DC one. What do I use for wireless video? You can actually use, uh, there's NDI apps available to do stuff from your phone. Um, you can also use a Spark wirelessly. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Live view is also amazing. Could not work. I, I live for live view. I've got my solo working right now. What is the most basic TriCaster looked into to buy? Um, I suggest if you're entry level, start with a mini. Um, but uh, if you want something a little more professional, they have a 410 plus, but really go for the TC one. It's, it's, it's the, the, the meat. It's, it's really the best you can do there. Advice for new talk show producers who are taking on switching now. Uh, keep it simple. Also, honestly, the X keys, here's my X keys. You can see it here. Only put the things that you need to do onto that, and then you don't get lost screwing up a bunch of the other stuff. Um, that's, that's my best advice. Where am I headed, Ben? Where am I basement? I am in New York. Currently, I'm in my parents' guest room. Normally, I am in Manhattan. For Kumia, did I build a studio for him? Uh, I actually, I built it for him with the help of actually someone on this line. Uh, Burden, if you're here, you can say hi. Um, let's see what else we got over here. So I use TC1 versus a new mini. I would say use TC1 unless you could afford it. Why didn't I clean before showing off that room? Because I'm an idiot. New mini, great start point. If you need a physical in out, get it. Yes, Chris. Um, the uh, the physical in outs are really good. Um, New Tech makes them. Bird Dog also makes ones um, that do full um, NDI. Um, I don't know, uh, Chris. Do the uh, do the Sparks or any of the uh, TriCaster ones do full NDI? This is basically NDI and NDI HX. HX is a more compressed version. Looks great, but if you really need that full, you need to go with full NDI. Best way to bring in a remote guest, Skype, talk show, live view, mirror, Zoom. Uh, if you have any, uh, a, um, uh, uh, the, the mini 4K or the talk show, easily Skype. Skype is the best way to do it. Can you bring the program bus into the one of the E's? You can't bring program into an Emmy. You could only bring Emmys into program. But if you really wanted to get fancy with that, you could change your main mix output to be an Emmy. HX2 is now in line with traditional NDI Skype here. Uh, how do you record to the X keys? You literally, you build your macro, and then you go into that record part, and then you just hit the macro button, and it goes. That is an X keys 24 USB keypad. Best place to look online for more TriCaster tutorials. Go to New Tech. They've got a bunch. Um, that, that's really my best advice. Also, there's a whole bunch on YouTube. NewTech.tv. Yes, thank you, Chris. Book a demo. You might even get Chris. Um, choose me, choose Chris, Chris for president. Uh, there's still 50 of you left in here, wow. Um, let's see, any other questions here? Do, 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 do. Yep, uh, you thought the premium was 200 months, someone stated it was 1,000, Chris can tell you about that. Yep, Chris, you can definitely drop your email, they could also open people up to all that later. 
Um, please talk about saving shows to a drive. Um, I don't have try catch up anymore, but basically there's a little gear button that you press and you just choose your drive. It pops up like any other drive and you just record to it. Make sure it's a, um, the drive has fast enough uh, speeds and everything. Basically every drive now it does. You can even record to thumb drives in many cases. Um, so yeah, that is that. Ben is a state away. <laughs> yes, he is in Jersey. Um, all of you, um, the last few people on here, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. I also have a group called Live Streaming Managers um, that uh, has a bunch of live streaming stuff. I post jobs in there. If there's new news coming up, even new new tech news, uh, you can pop up there. Um, what else? Uh, there's uh, unofficial TriCaster groups on Facebook. Good for information there. Uh, there will not be an encore. Yes, both Chris and his dad trained at New Tech. Chris, Chris is the real deal. Uh, a bunch of those guys are awesome. Uh, if you can't afford to get a TriCaster, what are the best ways to get a chance hands-on streaming process? OBS, it's free. It does a lot of the stuff, not all of the stuff. OBS is free. Wirecast is like 600 bucks. Those are the kind of the cheapest ways in. Blackmagic makes some really cheap switchers. The A10 Mini Pro comes in at like 600 bucks. Um, so those are all ways to do it. OBS also does some cool stuff with NDI. Um, yeah, using NDI and a lot of those free tools, you can really soup up other software using them too. NDI TV for more on that. Yes, thank you, Chris. Okay. I think I am going to wrap this up because we are running dry on questions. Uh, this will be uploaded somewhere later. I need to just find a good place to put it. Uh, maybe I'll put it on uh, my friend Phillip's page. Um, good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, and maybe we'll do this again sometime. Maybe we won't. I don't know. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>